Hello and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video for you today. Once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Hope everyone is having an amazing day. We're going to go over some of the items that sold in the American Cancer Society eBay shop, which I am the manager of. And like I said, once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. We're trying to get to 9,000 subscribers by the end of this week. So definitely subscribe. If you've learned something, if you enjoy these shows, definitely click the like button at any time during this video and for those that are new basically what i do is i go over some of the items that were sold in our shop and you'll learn a little bit of something if you've been in this game for a long time like i have there's plenty of things to still learn i'm still learning every single day so if you're new to reselling this would be a great resource video for you to kind of see the different things that have sold, what things to look out for, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm Chris. I've been a reseller for over 30 years and now uh, in charge of the American Cancer Society's eBay page. So I've definitely came full circle in this reselling career. And 100% uh, of the proceeds go to cancer research, housing, transportation, wigs, all kinds of great stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm honored and privileged to be here. I appreciate you. Uh, most definitely. So uh, I did enough talking. So let's get right into it for sure. Uh, really quick, let's do some uh, shout outs. We got Four Eyed Hustler. We got Maui Delights and Flipper Joe in the house. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope everyone is having an amazing day. Definitely click the like button anytime during this video if there's something that you learned or if you do appreciate these videos. So <clears throat> I already got a frog in my throat. I haven't even gotten into the first item. Uh, first item today is La Croissant Blue Court Covered Saucepan, and I'm pretty pretty sure I'm butchering this brand. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the comments below someone will correct me on Le Croissant, Le Croissant. It's French, I think. It's got the Lee in the front. It's got to be French, right? Anyways, definitely look out for this. It's a Bolo brand. This is what it looks like. It's a pot. They They do lots of great ceramic kind of uh pots and pans and things like that they're basically ceramic with a metal kind of uh, insulator in there i don't know what you call it it's got a it's got a basically a ceramic shell that's what <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say a ceramic shell definitely look out for these these are very valuable if you can find them brand new especially the old retired ones the vintage ones go for a lot of money uh, this is easy money all day long if you see these at a garage sale, a thrift store, or an estate sale. You're more than likely going to find these at an estate sale, especially if you go look in the kitchen uh, and all that kind of fun stuff. It's like kind of obvious, right? <laughs> go look in the kitchen for this stuff. Duh. But anyways, uh, definitely go and check this brand out. This is a huge Bolo brand. If you haven't heard of this brand before, definitely go and look it up. And if you've come across this stuff, Good for you. Um, like I said, when you're shipping this stuff, just make sure you ship it properly because if this thing gets dropped, it can easily be shattered and chipped. And it looks like kind of crazy because it's got a ceramic shell. It'll almost like crack and then kind of chip off a little bit. So uh, definitely look out for that. Uh, we did take a best offer for $70. This is, it did not sell for $124.99. We, we did have this up for about a month. We had three of these. And I should say, uh, we had three different types of this kind of uh, cookware. And uh, we had a pot and we had a, a couple other things too that sold very quick. This was the last seller uh, on that list for sure. Uh, we got Connie Duncan in the house. We got Perla's Precious. Hello, welcome to the show. Hope everyone is having an amazing day. Let's keep going here. Do some, get some, keep Keep get. <laughs> I'm already. I'm already in the second item. I'm already tripping up all over my words here. Uh, today we have this bobblehead. This Matt Camp, Los Angeles Dodgers. We're in just outside of Los Angeles, so it's kind of figures that we're going to see a lot more Dodgers and Angels bobbleheads than most people around the country for sure. Um, we did take a best offer for I want to say like 16 something on this uh, with 9.99 shipping. Uh, now these can ship uh, very easily in a nine by six by five box. So if you have those in hand, you know, these things ship very easily. Just put a little bu bubble wrap around it. Now the pro tip on these is you should buy any bobblehead that's below $3 because for the most part, bobbleheads, the lowest price you're going to get for them is about $10. 
So if you don't have a phone and you don't, you can't look them up. Uh, usually three dollars and under is a good price point. Even five dollars and under is a good price point sometimes. Um, it depends on what your wheelhouse is, but you know, there's a lot of bobbleheads that go for over a hundred dollars. Uh, there's a lot of them that go for, you know, in between 20 and 50. Um, also when you look at bobbleheads, just open them up and make sure that they're not broken. They're kind of made out of this plaster and they're kind they're not fragile. I mean, they're fragile and all, if you drop one, it's going to break. Of course, it's like, you know, ceramic, very cheap ceramic. It's almost like, it's like a plaster more than a ceramic. And, but what I'm saying is just make sure the hands aren't broken. Sometimes the newer ones will have bats and usually they, they're on the side here. They're not, they're not attached anymore. A lot of the older ones would have like equipment that would be attached and that stuff would easily break. And then the companies got smart where they just put the bat on the side here and then you just screw it in or kind of stick it in, in there. Uh, another thing too, to look out for is, uh, lots of bobbleheads are signed inside on the actual bobblehead. So look on the helmets, look underneath, look on the side here of the base. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've bought bobbleheads and you look inside them to check them out and they're signed and the people don't know that they're signed. And so authenticating signatures, that's a whole other movie, a whole other movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole other movie. It's called authenticating signatures. It's, it's going to be the summer blockbuster. <laughs> there's there's tons of videos on how to how to look at that man my brain is just mushy mushy pie today for sure uh, but anyways bobbleheads definitely look them up if you have your phone and all that kind of stuff you can find these all the time at goodwills uh, goodwill hasn't really caught on too much as far as the bobblehead game so uh there's a definitely a place where you can find these i find these all the time at, at goodwills i just usually don't buy them because uh right now i'm kind of working on a different uh, game plan as far as my eBay store. But if I find one that's like 30 or $40 profit, I'm definitely going to pick them up. Even a $20 profit one, uh, for sure. Uh, Mary McQueen's in the house. How you doing? She says, I found bobbleheads flawed with no box, but I always check them. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really buy bobbleheads that aren't in a box. They're just so hard to look up sometimes. And that's, that's my personal preference. Everyone to each their own. Um, I stay away from bobbleheads that don't have boxes because for one thing, shipping them is another problem. What's nice is when you ship these in the boxes, they already have this nice foam thing that kind of insulates them and protects them and everything. But you never know. Look at, if you see loose bobbleheads, maybe they're signed and, you know, definitely do that for sure. Uh, next up, we have this lack of color woman's ivory rancher Australian wool hat. We got all the keywords in there. Don't forget the keyword stuff. Uh, pro tip is um, the first four words I heard are the most important words in the keyword search. Don't quote me on that. That's what I heard through some eBay people that I know. Uh, definitely the, four, the first four words are the most important. Anyways, uh, I've never heard of this brand before. And of course, it's, it's got a little bit of marking on it. Uh, Lack of Color is a bolo hat brand. You've probably never heard of it. I had never heard of it. Um, some people have probably heard of this. Um, like I said, I'm not into clothes or anything, but I've never heard of this brand. I looked it up to go for a lot of money. So, uh, lack of color is a Bolo brand for sure. And this one happens to be like a cream color. So it's kind of got a lack of color. It's kind of ironic and funny. So anyways, uh, definitely look out for this. Uh, we did, let me see what we charged for this. Uh, we did, uh, I think I took a best offer for $60 on this and the lady came in and picked this up locally. And that was a whole other thing for sure. But uh, very cool hat, very cool sale. And this thing even had damage on it. As you can see here, always use the condition thing in here. Like it says right here. Has some dirt marks that can be cleaned. Great looking at still. I don't know why. <laughs> what kind of... That was not a complete sentence. Great looking at still. Great looking at still. Oh man. See photos. Uh, another thing that I've been told by eBay people is when you're using the condition uh, kind of thing up here, never put see item description or see photos below. That is a no-no. I don't know why they said not to put it there, but only put the photo, only put the photo. See, my brain is like mushy pie today. Only put kind of some condition stuff in there and always fill that out. Never leave it blank. Uh, this is what the eBay told me, people told me. They told me never put see photos below or see item description below always kind of do a couple sentences and try to 
describe the condition as best as you can in that and then copy and paste it into your body of your work. Uh, as we can see here, this is what the body of work looks like. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this was the newer kind of thing that we had before. Uh, always copy and paste your title right in here and then always a copy and paste your item description or, or item condition in there. And also I've been told that dimensions, when you put in the word dimensions, not like the fourth dimension, but dimensions as far as like length, width, and height, that also helps too uh, with converting sales. So there's all these crazy like, you don't even need to go to eBay open. I'll tell you all the secrets right now. The only reason why to go to eBay open is just to meet people. That's the only reason why you should go to eBay open, to be honest eBay open is only like a social thing. You're not going to learn anything if you're a full-time reseller. That's for sure. Uh, we got Adam exploits in the house and he's from, He's in Las Vegas. He's at the eBay open. That's so funny. Good morning. Merrick Kitch seven Adam exploits. He's at eBay open. He'll know he'll, he'll, he won't learn anything new, but you'll learn more from the people that are there. Ironically for sure. Most definitely. Uh, I hope someone asks about cryptocurrencies if they're going to accept Bitcoin at some point. That would be cool. Uh, next up, we have this 14 karat shiny gold button clip earrings. Bab designer 14 karat thingy. Uh, huge shout out to Paula. This was a nice sale. I think we took a best offer for 215 or 220 on these. Uh, as we can see here, for those that aren't familiar with jewelry, usually newer jewelry. And let's see if this zooms in here. It's not going to zoom in here. Uh, usually jewelry, newer jewelry will have a 14K. It'll say sterling, all that kind of stuff. Just be very warned that vintage jewelry will not, for the most part, have hallmarks or mint marks or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've came across jewelry that people thought was just tone uh, because, you know, it didn't have any markings, but especially Russian and European vintage gold earrings and rings and things like that won't have the markings the markings are a newer thing i wish i knew the the data and the research to tell you oh this date is when they started to do this because it was a government thing they made sure that you know things were marked at a certain point i want to say it's probably the early 1900s that you know these marks have came in it could be the 20s or the 30s i'm not completely sure if you know leave a comment below but definitely uh highly suggest getting a gold tester the scratching ones also, I highly suggest if you're going to be selling jewelry, especially gold and sterling, get a scale and have the scale photo in at least one of your photos. You get all 12. Uh, another pro tip that I heard from eBay is that you want to try to use as much as the 12 as possible. Don't just put one or two photos. Uh, the algorithm loves photos. Uh, good photos too, by the way. You want to have a good crisp background. You don't want to have a bunch of junk in the background. You want to have a white or a black background. <clears throat> Google... Uh, parses the 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 what do you call it accepts the white backgrounds better than the black background but of course you know Cassini is going to be looking at your photos too by the way if your photos are blurry if your photos aren't focused if they're not composed correctly they're not framed correctly uh, Cassini in its ultimate wisdom is going to tell you to go to the curb with your stuff and you're going to get pushed down in the rankings how I know this I will not say but just listen to me when I'm telling you. You don't need to go to eBay Open. Your eBay Open's right here. Uh, pro tips, he says. White or gray? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I like the back, black backgrounds for my silver and gold jewelry. It just pops. But, you know, like I said, use the 12 photos if you can. Uh, next up, we have this vintage original classic Tiffany perfume bottle dab. 0.25 ounces this is very small uh what was crazy is we got a huge donation in from someone that worked for the academy awards and it wasn't really someone that worked for the academy awards it was someone that was contracted to do swag bags for the academy awards and let me just pull back a little bit for those that don't know there's a lot it's kind of ironic that celebrities get free stuff when they're already millionaires that's a whole other subject in itself so let me just not go down that road Celebrities get free stuff when they go to these things. They get swag bags. They get all these bags, and they're given out by all different types of contractors, and they get free stuff, right? Ironic and crazy. Well, anyways, some of them probably just give that stuff to their friends. I know a couple of actors that, you know, they, they, they'll they either they'll sell the stuff 
or they'll just give the stuff to their friends. Anyways, this lady was a contractor. She was doing stuff for the Academy Awards. She had like three or four bins full of, of like perfumes and different things. And uh, we got them. There was like 50 of these, 50, five zero of these in that collection. And uh, we've been selling them for about eighty nine ninety nine. Now, I thought about blowing them out, putting the price like super low where people just buy the whole thing. But we've been selling these, so I'm just going to trickle them out over the course of however long it takes to sell 50. Anyways, back to the Tiffany stuff. Uh, definitely look out for this kind of, uh, you know, stuff. Everyone pretty much knows and reselling about Tiffany and company. It's, it's a highly Bolo brand. There's some, now everything that Tiffany makes isn't going to be necessarily gold, necessarily high value. A lot of their glassware doesn't really go for that much. So when you see D Tiffany and company glass crystal, don't get too excited. A lot of that stuff does not go for a good amount of money. Uh, the silver and the vintage stuff for, for whatever reason is the things that are really sought after the old gold, especially vintage and antique Tiffany and company. Uh, goes for a crazy amount of money, but uh, you never know. And the thing is, this thing's so tiny. I wish I put like a like a quarter or a dime or something next to it to see what it was. But this sold for ninety dollars, and we've sold like three or four of them already at this price point. Uh, and we also got men's one too. We got some men's cologne that was the same kind of uh, box and and setup and everything like that for sure. Uh, Merikite 7, are you leaving any meat on the bones for resellers at shop? That's actually a really good question. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things that I work in an office, and if those of you seen the vlogs, I, I have a window, right? I have a door window, and people are always walking by and watching me do my thing. And they're, I've heard, I can hear through the door, by the way. Oh, that's where all the good stuff is. Oh, there, there's nothing out here for us. All this kind of stuff. I work with 16 different shops out of 48 shops. And so a lot of that stuff that is coming from other shops. So that's one of the things that's kind of a falsehood about that. The other thing is the ladies are putting stuff out all the time during the day. And especially the clothes. I don't really deal with the clothes too much. There is a lot of retail arbitrage still to be had at these stores. So don't think that since I work there that a lot of the good stuff is never going to be on the floor to a certain point. That is correct, but also you're going to, let me just put it this way. You're going to find better stuff in our store than you are ever going to find in a Goodwill. There you go. That's I'll just leave it at that. Uh, next up, we have this military ring here, Navy. This was a gold filled ring and I, I'm, I'm a little ashamed of myself for not actually, oh, there's the mint mark right there. What is going on here? That was weird. It was showing a different photo. Uh, anyways, uh, look for these uh, 14 carat. Uh, it'll say like GF for gold filled. If you see like loaded, weighted, uh, and and kind of like the the sneaky thing that they do is they do they do 14k and it says GF, and you might not think, oh, well, this is 14 carat solid gold. No, it's gold filled, which means it's basically like uh, a shell of gold and whatever kind of elements you can see one of the biggest pro tips for anyone that wants to just like visually see if there's something happening here if it really is 14 karat gold do you see that there's that green kind of stuff on this now i'm not exactly sure what the correct terminology for the green stuff is called um but if you see any green moss type of sludge growing uh, I think that's like some sort of oxidation thing happening between metals and stuff leaching out. I'm not exactly sure the technical thing. I do know that it's like a, I don't want to say cancer. It's like almost like, it's like, it, it'll spread to your other jewelry, by the way, too. So always uh, quarantine jewelry that has green stuff on it. That's what I've heard. But anyways, that tells you that it's not pure gold, pure silver. <clears throat> you ever hear of cheap rings? And you put it on and then you take it off and you got green stuff on your on your fingers or whatever. That's what that is. It's not a pure it's not pure gold. There's something going on with that. If you see that on any kind of gold, that's gonna usually tell you that it's not pure gold. So uh that's a pro tip right there. This sold for twenty two dollars and one cents as someone I obviously I realized what this was. If this was a solid gold ring, it probably would have went for maybe 150 dollars 
but just I'm just letting you know. Uh, normally, I wouldn't show you this, but just the information and the pro tip about if you see the the green, the green crud, uh, definitely be warned. Uh, next up, we have this Gillette Safety Razor. Some of you might not know that vintage razors actually go for a pretty good amount of money. This thing was pretty cool. It had like brand new blades, used blades. It had the case and everything. I thought this would have went for a lot more, but we did uh, take one bid at forty nine ninety nine. If you go to estate sales, look in the bathroom for these things. This is what they look like, as you can see here. And there is a whole subculture of collectors that collect this uh, vintage razors and everything like that. If you've never even heard of this, it's a thing. Um, I'm pretty sure people still use these if you can get some, uh, you know, some blades and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, if you're in a estate sale, always look in the bathroom, look for these. Now, not all of them are going to be worth a lot of money. Uh, usually basically the newer condition ones and they they made some of them back in the day that they didn't really make they weren't like limited edition Ooh, limited edition razor they just didn't make uh, certain amounts of different ones and those can actually go for hundreds of dollars so definitely uh, keep an eye out uh, for that for sure uh, i wish everyone a happy day today hope everyone's doing great at the um ebay open that's what i meant to say and uh, look, leave a leave a like. <laughs> I'm a mess today. Uh, I'll let you guys know about more about what's going on. Uh, definitely in another show. But anyways, thank you for everyone for watching. Click the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you learned something, if you have a question, leave a comment below. And we'll see you next time.